And we are live. There we go. Cool. Hey, so, hey, hey, there we go. So uh, let's let's do our thing. Let's just go ahead and do our share. Yeah, I see. Let me see. I'm doing a page refresh here. I see hey, it. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Oh, we got feedback there. Um, is that? Oh, I lost my phone. I just turned it off. Oh, it's so. on your phone. Okay, cool. Uh, let me go ahead yeah. and do a quick share here. So. So hey, where are you uh, where are you located? You know, Minnesota, right? I, yeah. So I I was in Boston for a few years, and now we're back in Minnesota. Oh okay. Yeah. So what uh, uh, what part of Minnesota? We are in Woodbury, which is the suburb of St. Paul, Minnesota. Awesome. Yeah. So, guys, give her a shout out. You guys are in Minnesota. Let's, let's go ahead. Let's give some thumbs up. Give them some likes. Uh, any Minnesota folks, give us a holler. <laughs> hey, Minnesota. <laughs> it feels so good to be back. It's a little surreal, but it, it feels good to be back. Yeah, is it uh, is it cold up there yet? Actually, today's been really nice. You know that she um, it's um, it's it's a lot colder than it's been in Boston. So it's a it's a, it's a shock. It's been a while. It's so funny how you forget how cold places are after you move away and so good along, and you're like, dang, was it really this cold? And it was, it was. <laughs> so when well, you say Boston, right? So how long were you there in Boston? Um, we were there for about four years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, that's almost a lifetime. <laughs> it was by really fast. We really, you know, it, um, reality is if it wasn't for COVID, we would probably still be there. We would probably still be there. Um, but we decided to move back to be closer to family and they have less cases happening in Minnesota than they do in Massachusetts. So we decided let's just, you know, come back and, you know, enjoy our time quarantine, <laughs> social distancing with the family. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So you got, you got family in Minnesota too, or? Who doesn't have, you have family? Who doesn't have family in Minnesota? <laughs> I mean, you have to have at least one relative. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I only got one over there so far. Yeah. Right? So I got a few cousins. Yeah. Well too, yeah. So, yeah. So, but I, I'm talking about your parents. Is your parents in? Yep. My mom lives here. Um, my husband is one of seven. So his whole family lives here. I mean, wow. it's like, yeah, it's like the whole family is here. Gotcha. So, yeah. Um, guys, give us a shout out. Give us some likes. Uh, I got a great entrepreneur on the on the show tonight. Oops, sorry, that's my bad. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Uh, we're gonna start pretty soon. Um, questions? Got questions? Go ahead and comment below. Um, let us know where you guys are at. You guys in Minnesota? Uh, let us know. You guys in California? Let us know. Wisconsin? I think. The, I think somebody mentioned the Bears are playing today. Oh my! <laughs> This bears, that's tough. <laughs> I don't keep up with football, but uh, I am from Chicago. I was born in Chicago, so any Chicago folks. How did you end up in um, Florida then? Oh, uh, you know, my dad, you know, during that real estate boom down here in Florida. So my dad, uh, that's they came down here. So, uh, yeah. you know, back in 1990. So that's, and we've been here ever since. So oh. uh, give you guys a shout out here. We got uh, KZ. I think she's from Minnesota. Uh, Milwaukee. I got Linda from Hey Casey, Florida. Uh, Florida. Ooh, Linda Pass. Yes. Hey, great show with you and Linda yesterday. That was awesome. Yeah, so Linda you guys, that was awesome. Um, my says woo. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, my goes, question from Massachusetts. Yep. Uh, goes, Blake goes, hey Chai, uh, Sandra, Wisconsin in the house. We got it. North Carolina, mm. and we got M M A. Is that Massachusetts? That's Massachusetts. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Wisconsin in the house. All right, let's hear about money. Linda wants to hear about money. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about some money. How do you make no. money? Yeah. So um, let's see here. You get done doing your shares? I did. I did. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, let me do one more. Yeah, look, I got one more too. I got one more share in me. It's Let's gotta be. Go. It's gotta be an easier way to share. I mean, right? You think it would just be like one button, and y'all, and you yeah, just like, like you, put, you put all of them in one group and you just share. You know, it's gotta be an easier way to do this down the road. Mm -hmm. 
and share. Well, you know, I, I actually don't, I use StreamYard and it lets you post, it lets you stream the multiple spots at once. So I don't have to share for that reason, just so you know. Yeah, StreamYard is cool, but does it does it do it by groups as well, like like Facebook groups? Yeah, you can set it up. You could do like, you could stream into a page, a personal profile, yeah. groups like multiple, or YouTube and Facebook. So you could do it simultaneously. So you can um, add, so you can add all these groups, like all these mom groups into like one group and then you can go share if that. you are an admin and yeah. of the group and um Lepukana, yeah you could you oh, okay could. yeah okay cool yeah. all right uh almost there it's here where you guys are at give us some shout outs give us some shout outs you know uh we're just doing one more minute guys one more minute we start and then that's it We'll go ahead and start talking about what we got going on today, which is going to be a very, very cool topic. Let's see, share. See, I'm an amateur. You're, you're the pro. So <laughs> that's why. you're the hustler. I, I'm just here yeah. to take on the world. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're the pro. I got to learn more from you. See, as you see, I just learned something today. There we go. <laughs> How much is it? How much is it? Do you know? I mean, of course you know yeah. because, we, because I'm using um, uh, a BE Live, which is kind of the same thing, but um, wow, it's it feels like it's ancient compared to what you have. I think last time I checked, Stringyard is a lot more affordable. Even their free one is pretty awesome. Um, the free one, they have their logo stamped on there, and you can do multiple streams. But I really like Stringyard. Um, I can't remember what sold me on it compared to Be Live, but yeah. it just it's pretty it's pretty much the same. I think what I really liked about it was it's not only more affordable, but you can do. Um, like different backgrounds, different logos. So I got like momenting on the world branding setup, and then I got my own, you know, better with company brand setup. So then you just easily switch. Um, so I just things like that, you know, every little thing that you can do. You know how this is, right? Chai as a host to yeah. just quickly go. Like yeah. that's what makes it worth There's it. So right? much involved. Yeah. Because if you guys do one of these stuff, it's so much involved because no. you're interviewing, you're saying the technical part, and then the the guest has to be a little bit technical and then and then you gotta ask questions and while you're asking questions you're looking at all the feedback people messaging you and is there's so much involved yeah, so I mean, you can't type and talk and interview the host all at the same time you know it's like yeah i'm gonna keep up right because i'm asking the question i have to listen and i have to come back do some sort of combat you know a feedback back to you so it's like there's so much involved you guys if you guys ever done this it's like ah oh, you know yeah but, you know but it's also the greatest feeling ever too, because you get to meet like really special people, like like you, you know. So, um, uh, here we go. We got Sang. Sang says hello, Chai and hello. Elizabeth. Uh, Tu Fang. Tu Fang is from Saint Paul, Minnesota, right down the next of your wood. Uh, Ely is that Ely Vang? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I stink it. Uh, Calling out people's names, like especially Mo names, right? Yeah, e, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo, you know, and Mo were so creative with these backwards spelling names. So yeah. So all right, we got another California. So let's start. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go for it. All right. So welcome to uh, Mo Hustler Show number thirty. You know, tonight we got a special guest. She's founder of Mo Women Take on the World. Dude, that's awesome. That's an awesome name. You know, when when I first heard that, I was like, wow, you know, that's that's like that's powerful right there. So we're gonna talk to uh Elizabeth. Let me go and switch my names over here. So at least it looks a little bit nicer. And then we'll switch and it's Elizabeth Yang, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So welcome to the show, Elizabeth. So uh we're gonna talk a little about how you got started and uh Take it from there. You got something special going on, like, like toward the middle of this month. And uh, when I first heard about it, I'm like, I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, somebody's doing this. So, uh, but let's let's hear about a little bit about yourself, right? Tell us a little bit about yourself, because I think when I was reading your profile, it says you're like an online business strategic strategist. 
Yeah. So yeah, what is that? Yeah. So I run my own business. I've been a business consultant and coach. Um, I've been running my own business full time for almost two years now, but it was a side hustle. Um, I did it when I was um, I still have my career. And basically, you know, my whole focus is all about, you know, the customer mindset. You get, you know, you write, find the right customers, you get more yeses and more sales. And everything that I do right now is just really focused on helping people show up online and build their online income stream for their businesses. So that could look like, you know, courses, that could look like masterminds, that could look like group programs, but it's just really build that online income stream and think about how do you strategically get the right customer? Cause it's not just about money. It's about the right customer too. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, is it, I mean, is it, is it hard? I mean, it sounds hard. Right. You know, I, you know, it's so funny. People always say like running your own business isn't that hard, but you know what though? Anything worthwhile in life is hard, right? Like I think that having a job and working for a boss you don't like and coworkers that you can't stand every yeah. single day, that's hard. That's hard. Well, well, right? I, meant, I meant doing this part, like the online stuff, right? Cause like, it's like technology. You have to keep up with technology, right? Is that hard? I mean, do you have to like learn, like the t technology part right is that is that hard like do you are you constantly learning from it or is it is it always changing yeah so you know my background was in technology before i started my own business i was in research and development and i managed a team of emerging tech so i know it, i don't look like it but i really do enjoy tech and one of the things that I would say I'm really good at from a research and development perspective is understanding how customers, people make decisions and how technology plays into that. So, you know, that's so in my business to answer your question. Yeah, technology is always changing. So if you're like a digital marketing agency, you got to be on top of that game. Right. But the way that customers decide and how they buy, especially with tech, it's it's not as fast as you would think. Um, I think most business owners where they fall into that trap is they think that, oh, you know, like I do business brick and mortar, I do business in person, and now I just gotta jump online and like jump on a Zoom call, you know, that's it. And yeah. the reality is we all behave very differently than we do on online than we do in business, but it's not hard at all. It's actually, you know, it's actually more fun because every, you're just a lot more accessible. Like people around the world can, can reach you and, um, my business has been thriving because of that. So, gotcha. so, yeah. so, so the, the title online business strategy strategies, it's you're targeting online stuff like what Facebook, like, so, yeah. So it's basically anybody that is, has, is a thought leadership, right? You have a knowledge expertise, like a realtor, yeah. um, you're a lawyer, uh, maybe your coach, like a life coach, a football coach, a high performance coach, and basically you just want to build your online income stream. So what that could look like could be how do I develop a course, right? And you know, have it be self service. Um, how do I create an online mastermind group? Wow, and money for it, right? Because you're selling your you're selling your knowledge, right? And wow. Okay. So yeah. So oh, okay. So I get it now. Cause I thought you were just like a, like a, like a digital market, like a marketing person. Right. And you're yeah. using the tools, but no, you're, you're like, you're quitting these courses. You know, that's what you do, right? Yep. So my um, company is called better with company. We're a high touch coaching and training agency. So we do done for you too. So we build courses. Um, we build um, what I call your light website, mm -hmm. but, I don't build it. My tech team, we don't build it solo. So it's not like you can go and say, Hey, I want to build a website. Hey, Elizabeth, can I, can you help me build a website? Yeah. I only build it for the clients that I work with. So I do their business strategy. I help them come up with the marketing messaging. I help them figure out like their thought leadership. I help them build out their messaging, their marketing, their sales funnel. I call it the, the money triangle, right? Which is understanding your customers. So you know what success looks like them. That's number one. People well, give, think, me, well, give me an example, right? These yeah. terms are like, so I'm trying to build like a papaya, right? I'm trying to sell papaya, right? As a papaya company, right? So how do you how do you market this? How, I mean, what is your thought process as far as okay, let's just let's just. I mean, I'm making it simple, but yeah. what is your thought process? I love it. I love talking about business, right? So, so if you're selling papaya, 
there's and every business i always call it the four money lovers right so big companies fortune 500 companies solopreneurs it doesn't even really matter if you want to make money in your business it comes down to four things right so one customer success and i'll break it down right for your papaya example customer success the right customer and are you really clear about what success looks like for them not what you think they want but what they really want right marketing sales mm. marketing sales right and product so anytime you're looking to make more money those are one of the four levers that you're constantly pushing and pulling and you got to be able to maximize all four of them to make your business profitable right so and it doesn't matter like i've done consulting for big companies looked at you know their business model looked at how they're making money it's one of those four levers solopreneurs the same thing most solopreneurs like selling papaya that's a product and where most people don't make money is they're so focused on just selling that product buy my papaya right buy my papaya right so you know if i was working with someone who was selling papaya there's usually two types there's like the mom and pop who wants to go to the farmer's market and just sell it right then there's like i want to own the whole like supply chain of making papayas right from you know getting it manufactured all the way to the shop so you know most service providers like hairdressers right you can make money by cutting hair but you can also make money being a hairdresser and running a very successful salon and then taking that knowledge and teaching it back to people well, let's go man let's keep it simple right i want to yeah. sell papaya salad mm -hmm. to the united states so if you were to think of some sort of strategy for me like just give a simple like what how would you start yeah so um, papaya isn't necessarily like an online business so to speak yeah. right Not like you can do masterminding for that right okay, let's, then let's do uh i'm selling home hats you know home hats, right so let's say that you've been selling home hats and you have the whole supply chain like nailed down right yeah All so right. now other let's say other home people in your community they're like, I want to start going overseas to Asia and I want to start producing, you know, um, let's say cha, tia, cow, right? So now you're selling that and you're like, gosh, I built this really successful supply chain. I got partners back in Asia. How do I get people to buy from me and buy my hats, but also buy me to, to teach them and train them how to work with my manufacturers, right? So you got to, first of all, get really clear in customer success. Right. So sometimes big and home basically, oh, big and home, be she boss, right? But you know what? People who buy hats, they can just want to buy hats, but not everybody who buys a hat wants to learn how to, you know, partner with your manufacturing company in Asia. So you have to be really clear, like, what is your intention? And like, who is the right customer that you really want to do business with? Right. So I um, want to make money, right? So mm -hmm. I want to make money. Just, I got, I got supply chain or just hats. All right. So yeah. show me how to make money just by are, are, you, are you i mean how do you watch i mean how do you consult somebody and say hey, this is what you need to do do is that yeah. is that what you do or is that yeah that's exactly what we need to do so okay. the first step would be okay so you need to decide do you want to sell hats and make money just selling hats to the person the consumer yeah or you want to sell hats and like build the supply chain and like manufacture and have more people do business with you and you just basically outsource it to your partners in asia right like do you want to be more what i would call b2b right so I get really clear on what that is right yeah, because i got i got my mom and dad they all they do is they're good at making these hats all right so what me starting a business business how would how would i start it you know that so then you go and you figure out okay so i always say right most of the time we start business we think oh i gotta go figure out what the problem is that the people who want to like manufacture um and buy hats and bone um, and bone hats in asia what the problem is but see just because there's a problem doesn't mean there's always a desire so i always say you got to go in and you got to listen to like why would your mom and pop want to go manufacture moan hats right yeah. like not only what are their biggest problems maybe it's finding you know a vendor they can trust maybe it's understanding how the whole process works but you gotta dig really deep to say what is truly their desire everybody says they want to make money but some people are just straight up they want to make money and some people are doing it because there's an emotional desire to do more right so you got to figure out like who your customer is do you want to just work with the people that just want to make money quickly because that may not be the right customer for you if you're like looking to make an impact i'll be honest yeah. with you because yeah. people are just looking for quick money right yeah. they're not that invested in the relationship so they're very uh -huh. screw you over they're gonna screw you over and walk away and there's no guilt for them right so mm -hmm. 
that's where customer success looks like. You've got to really get clear again on really what what is the desire of why they buy the template they to manufacture these hats. Yeah. What is your biggest barrier? Then from there, you then decide what can you do to close the gap, right? What do you do to close the gap? So there's a path that I call, which is the point of pain to gain, right? Like what, what is their pain point and what are you going to do so that they gain something out of doing business with you, right? Like if you're like, hey, you do business with me and I'm going to save you, you know, $10,000 in six months of, you know, time, that's a big gain. Right. And that means that you're, you're going to be probably really expensive to do business with, but you're going to save them a lot of pain and wasted time. Right. Yeah, so I, was thinking, so, I was thinking about something else. So like, so I already got the supply chain down. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned about the click funnels and stuff like that. Is that, do you go that far into it? It depends. Okay. So it depends on your, it depends on your, your the maturity of your business. Okay. So mm -hmm. I got my supply chain down. Help me with the rest of it. Do you, do you, is that what you do with the rest of it? Like, you know, like, I don't know, get insurance for the company, you know, build some sort of website. Is that, is that where, is that where you you're manufacturing down? And let's say that your business is, you know, you got your manufacturing down mm -hmm. and you want to show people. Okay. Let's say that you build your manufacturing business down. You've got partners in Asia. Yeah. Now you want people to pay you to show them the, fastest way to build these relationships. So you're like, you want to be the third party, the middleman, basically, right? So what's the first step? It's not click funnels because if you've never been online before, it always goes back to relationship building. And what that looks like is one-on-one -on -one work, right? So I always recommend my clients, if you're starting out in the online space is new, it sounds really fancy for you to, you know, jump into click funnels, to jump into all these fancy websites. But behind business, especially online, it still comes back to relationships so you gotta do one-on-one -on -one first so then I, I work with them on the milestone so let's look at how much money you're gonna hit first doing one-on-one -on -one, right once you hit that financial milestone that means that we now have validation that you got the right customer right you gotta talk to a lot of people to figure out this is the right customer or not right so, so when you mention relationship you're talking about customer relationships customer relationships okay it's so what's the quickest way to build some sort of relationship with customers like, one -on -one. yeah one-on-one -on -one? It's one on one, right? Like your first 10K will always come from your network. Your okay. next 100K will always come from your network. So your next milestone in your business financially always comes back from your your network. So I always tell people if you're starting out and you're like, I'm gonna put, a, you know, I'll do an ad and click funnels, like you're gonna have to wait a really long time for your sales cycle to make money because the fastest way for you to start making your first 10K in your business will be your network. And a lot of that has to do with your marketing and messaging. Like, how are you messaging people? How are you telling them now that you're, you know, selling papaya or selling a mong hat or you're looking for people to join your mastermind? Like, what is your marketing? What is your message to your network? That's where All you right. gotta wrap up, right? I see, so, I, see, I see where you're going with this. So your 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 network, right? So you gotta build your network, which is friends and families, right? Mm -hmm. So that's first the first group of people you sell to, right? Is that is that kind of where you're going at? Is you start with relationship, right? That's what you mentioned, right? Is that is that where you're going? Relationships, but you don't sell to them. So here's the thing. So there's two yeah. things I'm teaching them. So remember I told you the money triangle, right? The first one I've been talking about is like customer success, customer research, knowing the right customer to do business with you, right? Then it's your marketing and your sales, right? And so there's two things that I teach. I teach what I call relationship selling and conversational marketing. Yeah. So most of the time, especially in the Hmong community, when we start looking at um, selling things and we're thinking friends and family, that's exactly what we're doing is we're selling to them. But you're not, but you shouldn't be selling to them because even though they are your network that will get you your first quickest 10K, yeah. your main objective is not to sell to them. Your main objective is to educate them, help them spot the right customers to refer to you. That's the trick. That's what I call conversational marketing, right? Wow. So let's, if you're selling your, your manufacturing for Bong Bong Bao, right? And you're, I, the right customer for you is Zhao, um, somebody who's in their 40s. Maybe they've already had a couple of brick and mortar businesses. Now they kind of have money to invest. But who big and Hmong, they want to go back and invest making a difference in Asia. That's your ideal customer, right? Then you don't go and find these people. You go to your network and you start educating and you start saying to them, here's what I'm trying to build. 
I'm trying to, you know, invest and make a home overseas. I built like this network. I built this manufacturing. Who do we know in our community who's maybe had some level of modest success already and they're ready to now invest and do something a little bit bigger, right? And so you start educating your network about the customer you're looking for, right? So that they can spot how to find them, right? So are you, I mean, I, I see where you're going. So I, are you, instead of selling it to friends or family, are you going to say, hey, do you know who would want to buy this Mon hat, right? But in theory, if they want it, they will buy it from you and you and if they know somebody they can sell it they, they they can refer you is that kind of what you're doing yeah it's kind of, that's, kind of what you're saying kind of additional marketing right there yeah. right so if your friends and family say yes and they want to buy from you that's bonus but that shouldn't be your main objective right like yeah. when you have a networking event like i never go to a networking event to sell I go to go to a networking event and I always think, how can I educate them about what I do and turn them into my biggest advocate? Because then they want to, then they're like, oh my gosh, I really like Elizabeth. I want to do coffee with her, right? But if you don't stand out, then you don't seem like the type of person I want to do coffee with. Yeah. Why would, they have, why would they take your follow up? It's just, you know, sales 101, right? So that's why you got to go in with a different mindset of building a relationship, educating, knowing them as much as they know you. That is awesome. I mean, those of you guys, don't know what she just said there. <laughs> it's, it's like killing two birds with one stone, conversational marketing. So uh, man, I wish I can kind of go back and just kind of recap it. So this is my mind thought, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is amazing what you just said here. So we're talking about, so I go up to a friend say, hey, you know anybody who would want to sell or well, buy this particular home hat? So you're, if they your friend might want to buy it. So that's, that's great. That's a bonus, but they're also there to help you sell your stuff, right? Without even knowing, cause you're just, you're asking them and they, and if they have that sense of like, you know, everybody has that sense where they want to help somebody. So they're going to go, Oh, I know this person that might want to. So it's already like, you know, it's like a pebble that yeah. just, it just ripples, you know? Yeah, and you gotta remember that, you know, I've been doing customer research for a really long time. Everybody buys on emotions, right? So when someone hits me up and they're like, hey, Elizabeth, you wanna join my MLM or you wanna join my financial insurance company to make extra money? I'm like, no. But if you hit me in my emotions, right, which is more than just making money, if you really took the time to really know if I'm the right customer for you, right, then people are willing to really, you know, <laughs> people really, people want to know that you know them. Right. So that's why I say to like the audience, it's not just about customers and money. Right. Hey, for all um, she's one of our diamond sponsor for momenting on the world. So, you know, guys, so okay. guys, if you, uh, you know, give us, give us a shout out where you guys are at. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just giving you guys a shout out. So if you guys, where you guys are at, just give us a shout out. And Georgia. Georgia's in the house. Yeah, so, go ahead. Cause I'm sorry, Elizabeth. No, so I could talk about business like forever. That's why I was really excited to try to be on your on your show because I just absolutely love business. Um, I have I love what I do. Um, I have so much fun, you know, building businesses, helping my clients and students grow theirs. Um, because you know, it's all about really finding the right people, right? The right customer, the right team, the right network. Um, if you start there, yeah, you build that right, then mm -hmm. it follows. It's, so, it's yeah. Helpful. That's great. So I, will, I mean, I won't ask you too much of it, but we'll, we'll do we'll do one more, right? How do you find the right customer? You find the right customer by finding out who you want to work with. I mean, I know it sounds funny, right? But there are some people that you just don't want to work with, right? Yeah. And I'll tell you, this is why it's so important. So when people start out, they're like, I'll take anybody because I just need a paycheck, right? I just need money. <laughs> I'll just take, I'll work with anybody. But what happens when you start working and building your business that way is that you're literally just trading, right? Dollar for time, right? And, you know, like I often tell my clients, right? You're working with one client that you're not excited about working with. It takes a toll on your energy, right? You jump on the call with, you know, talking to a client that you don't like, and then all of a sudden you hang up and then boom, you go to your next call and, and you're talking to that client, you're networking, your energy is like just so low. Nobody wants to network with you. But when you're on a call and you're with the right customer, 
they light you up, you're lighting them up. It's like, you just go, go, go. You go to your next networking event, you're still like on this natural high of just feeling so great, right? Mm -hmm. And so then your, your energy, the way you show up is just like on fire. So that's how you really know what the right customer is, is whether or not that person, one, lights you up. Most people want to think, they think that, you know, I need to find the right customer. The right customer is the person that says yes to me, but in terms of like writing me a check, but it's not. I mean, I, you know, I've had to turn clients away that even though they're like, Elizabeth, I want to work with you and I'll pay you where I was just like, I'm just not feeling it. Like you're not the right customer for me. Right. Because you got to realize that money is nothing more than energy. So finding the right customer, if you want, like, if you believe in the law of abundance or the law of attraction, if you want more money in your business, when you find the right customer, guess what? Human beings, we hang out with like-minded people. When you find the right customer, they got friends and family that are just like them. Yeah. So you got to like be focused on finding the right customer versus the right customer being the person that's going to pay you. But I say you don't know. I mean, you don't, you don't know. I just say you're like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm like a beginner. How do you just start talking? Is that, is that where you're, is that kind of, is that the easiest way to start talking? Yeah. Well, that's where I was saying, you know, about your, um, where you are in your stage of your business and just go again doing one-on-one, -on -one, right? It's like dating. How do you know that this person is the right one you're going to marry? You don't know until you just start dating, right? <laughs> Finding the right client is like the same thing too, right? You, when you, especially when you're just in startup mode, you got to just go in with the right mindset and say, okay, this is like dating. I don't know. I think I know that this is the right customer, but here I am, right? Like just going to work with you. But that's how you grow. That's how you learn. And then you just got to keep it. You got to constantly be on purpose with finding the right customer. Just like if you're single, you're like, I need to find the right partner to marry. Right. Yeah. Like you got to just constantly be in the game of dating. Right. And finding the right customers the same way. And that's why I say, you know, especially when you start your business one-on-one -on -one online, it's important mm -hmm. to do that one-on-one -on -one work for, um, before you just start saying, Oh, I'm going to just do a course and sell it because you don't have, you don't really know like how to speak to people's pain points. You don't know what the transformation and the success looks like for them yet until you start working with them. That's how you know. Awesome. So, all right. So I know we didn't, we didn't quite get into it, but <laughs> how did you get started? How'd you get started being this, you know, an online business strategist? This is a hard title. Yeah. You know? Well, you can just so, call me a business coach. <laughs> or, yeah, okay, yeah. That's perfect. Like a business coach. How, how did you get started? I mean, this is not yeah. you're young as you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, you know, I, like I mentioned, you know, I've been in business for a really long time, over 10 years in corporate America, right? It's very similar, but I actually was an accidental entrepreneur. I really didn't have any intentions of starting my own business. I wanted to just stay focused on, you know, the, you know, climbing the ladder to VP, executive VP. Um, but what happened was I got a message one day in my LinkedIn. It was from a co-founder in Chicago. And she actually was like, Elizabeth, I'm so desperate with what my business is right now. I'm going through everybody I know. You look like your background, like you could help me. I, ha I, haven't, I haven't even heard from her in like years and I didn't know her that well. But when anybody asks me for help and I really think I can genuinely help them, I'm like, yeah, sure, let's jump on a call, right? So she ended up um, telling me all her business challenges and what they were trying to do with growing their business and their startup. And I seriously believed in my heart that I could help as a consultant, right? So I said, yeah, I really think this is, you know, one, two, three, this is what we need to do and pivot your business and your product and really package it this way. And she said, okay, great. So how much do you charge? And I was like, oh, dang, I should really start my business, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's really how I got started. And six months after working with them, they sold their first, you know, product program to a corporate client, which is a big deal for a small startup. Yeah. And um, ever since then, I was hooked. I was like, wow, like they move so much faster than big companies do. And it so just how do you, but how do you gain that experience? I mean, I mean, you have to see all these to to kind of give some sort of advice, right? I guess. You're, in, you're already in the corporate world, so I guess you see that, right? Is that is that? Yeah. Is that so I said, yeah, that first project, I, I like I said, it was my side hustle, and I yeah. and you know, I'll be real with you. Like I did my side hustle for about a year until I got enough word, uh, well, referrals where I thought, oh, now I can finally go in, all in. But then once I got all in, like the model completely changed. It didn't even it didn't even matter that I had been doing the side hustle for a year and a half because once I got all in the whole business model had to change because it just, 
it wasn't turning fast enough for me, right? So, you know, how you get started is you just start doing. I always say results are in the doing. And too many times we sit on planning our business plan, taking out Excel spreadsheet, um, yeah. sticky notes. And I just go back and I just say, you just got to make sure you have one product, start talking about it and try to get, you know, I always say aim for at least, you know, depending on what you sell, but you know, anywhere from a thousand to 10,000 and then boom, once you you get enough yeses that hit that financial milestone, then it's time just to go all in. Right. Cause if you don't bet on you, who's going to bet on you. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So for the people that might want to do this down the road, you know, how much does it pay? I mean, what do you charge for consulting? It depends. I do a lot of consulting for big companies and yeah. it could be anywhere from, you know, a workshop or a speaking engagement and anywhere can be from a thousand to three thousand dollars to start just as a one time gig. Um, and, you know, for clients, it depends, too. Sometimes, you know, some of my boost strategy calls, I don't offer it often, but it's like anywhere from three to five hundred dollars all the way to ten, fifteen, twenty thousand. So it really depends on. So really if I wanted to sell some mo hats. <laughs> How much would you charge me just to sell more hats? Give me some sort of business plan and say, hey, yeah. show me how to do this. Show me what your thought pattern is. Yeah. So the way that I work with my clients is we work together from anywhere from eight to 12 weeks, right? So that could be anywhere from five to 15, $20,000, depending on what you need done. Um, because my team, we also build, like if you're like telling me, hey, I want to do a course, so that I don't have to spend one-on-one -on -one time talking to my customers all the time, then you know I help you build out, map out your curriculum, and then my team will build the module, the portal for you, right? So all of that really depends on really what the client really needs. And the magic here, you guys, is how quickly you launch. You know, especially in the online space, on average, most people who launch online e-commerce or even like um, information uh, infopreneur, which is what I'm talking about here, they spend on average two to four years to launch a digital product, right? Because they're just, because there's no urgency. They're just like, I'm just going to open up a Facebook page and I'm going to start my business. And I'm like, wow. girl, that's not a business. That's a Facebook page, right? Yeah. You know, I just say that it's like flipping. You get this. You're in real estate. You know, it took me a long time to realize it's like flipping a house. Honestly, your online business is like flipping a house, right? Um, the longer you sit on that house and you don't flip it, the more mortgage you pay on it, you make money the quicker you flip it. And your online business is the same. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So those of you guys need some sort of business consulting, business coaching, uh, she's expecting some sort of what, eight to 12 weeks to, to be with you, to, to, you know, kind of show you the way. Uh, there you go. Five, five to 15,000. You know, that's, you know, I, I guess that's reasonable, right? It's because you're going to show them the whole path, you know? And, you know, so most businesses, what, what does it take? How long does it take for most businesses to fail, I guess? Like, well, I, sucking, something like that? I, I believe that failure only happens when you decide to give up. So it fails when you decide to give up. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to show them the way and then, you know, hopefully you become successful because you're, you already have the experience to push it down. Uh, and show them like yeah, how to be successful instead of them taking that time to learn, you know, how to be successful in a business. So awesome. So we'll pivot I and mean, we'll pivot. I mean, I know there's so much to talk about. I want to talk about, you know, how to do other stuff, but, <laughs> but, but I mean, we haven't even talked about I me. Mean, first thing we want to talk about what, why mom women take on the world. I mean, how did you, how did you come up with that name? Yeah. So the first time I launched it was in 2018 when we were still in Boston. And my daughter was seven at the time. Her name is Mookie. And one night we were just in bed snuggling, talking about her day. And I happened to ask her if she told anybody at school her phone name, right? And she said she did once, but the kids laughed at her. And um, she said to me, she said, Mom, just call me Evelyn. I'm not Hmong, I'm just Asian, right? Like she was so adamant about that. And coming from a big community, a big Hmong community like Minnesota, my heart broke because I realized how much I took for granted, my Hmongness. Um, and how much resources we had there, right? And so in that moment, I realized that I failed her as a mom. <laughs> I mean, I really did. I was like, I grew up around home. I just took it for granted, you know? Yeah. And here I was trying to teach my baby girl 
She parents college educated. We had decent jobs. She doesn't know, you know, immigrant refugee. Like that's all. Like that's just not her world. Being born here in the U.S. with two college educated parents. So I knew that I had to do something, and I realized that not only was it hard in the community, but even in mainstream, you know, being a woman of color was hard, especially women of color in tech. And um, literally the name came to me because I remember thinking how so the world will somehow tell her she's not the right size, not the right color, not the right, I don't know, something's wrong with her, right? Not enough somehow. How will my daughter be among American women taking on the world? That's literally my thought, like metaphorically, right? Yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, I got to do something. What am I going to do? Right. And um, I was like, I don't want to start a nonprofit. I don't want to, I can't do this, you know, 365 days a year. But Global Online Summit, I could do that because I did it for my day job, right? Um, I was in tech. I was very comfortable and confident with it. And then when I was thinking about a name, I really thought we got to like change things up a little bit. And um, I really thought, no women take it on the world because I know a lot of my sisters feel the burden of just the world on their shoulders many times as I talked to them. So that's the name came together. That's an awesome name. I mean, guys, guys, girls, you, if you guys are, I mean, how many of you guys think that that's an awesome name? Give us some likes. I thought it was. <laughs> give us some likes, give us some hearts, guys. I love that name because whenever I, whenever I read it, right, I'm reading off a piece of paper or when, when she first talked to me about it, you know, I'm like, I'm thinking of like a boxing match, you know, like with the eye of the tiger song, you know, like yeah, you that's guys are going out to take <laughs> on the world on this. This is awesome. Yeah. So, uh, if you guys like that title, how many people like title? Just give us a thumbs up, man. We just want to, we just want to see how many thumbs up we can get on the show, you know, so people can hear about, you know, this title. So, so, all right. So you got the name. I mean, what, what happened next? I mean, what are your views? I mean, tell me what you envisioned this to be well i really envisioned it to be like for me my own experience right like growing up as Hmong, and then just as a Hmong person inside the community i mean even my own experience personally i just never fed into big Hmong either like i wasn't from the nonprofit sector i was from private um and i just felt like sometimes not even just speak funny at home but even in our home community we can be very judgmental if other people don't fit exactly our background of what we think success is right and so i knew that i really wanted to be different and i wanted to embrace that so when i said to you that your quickest um your quickest 10k your quickest way of hitting those financial numbers really comes from your network. I also, I do embody that for momenting on the world too, right? I mean, it was the only way in six months that we could crowdfund $30,000. There's no way that I could have done that without the 60 partners that I curated in six months when we first launched, right? So I- Wow, let's hold on right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? $30,000 just through crowdfund? How did that happen? Explain that, that's amazing. I mean, there's there's gotta be a lot of support yeah um, well yeah we had 60 partners right around the world eight countries right yeah. so yeah so you know i think that what what worked is i shared my vision right i didn't go out there and said oh i need money to get this started right 100 yeah. percent of the money that i seeded into the moment to go the world the first year and even this year it comes out of my pocket 100 percent, right and then i figure out okay how do i make this back right and then some so i can keep funding it for next year right so I run it very much like I would like a business. And that was something that I was very intentional about because mm -hmm. I think being a mom, we need to evolve, you know, move beyond a charity mindset and start looking at a prosperity mindset. And especially for big and um, a lot of big and mom, we tend to have more issues with self value and self worth. And that has everything to do with money. And so like, how did it happen? It really started with me not asking for the money. What it started was sharing my vision. And remember when I told you that people say yes to emotions? I, it was my story of my daughter, right? Like wow. it was how I told my story. It was the vision that I, I was selling and also not just selling, but co-creating, right? Like even as a business owner, even as the founder of Momenting on the World, even as a leader in the community or mainstream, what gets people to say yes is your ability to co-create that future with them. It's not that you have the answer, you're the leader, you're the founder, you're the business owner, so it's your way. It's 
here's the vision. What's your vision? Let's build it together. And I think when you can, you know, position it that way and really mean that, people say yes. I mean, that was the only way why we got it done in six months. So explain the vision. What was, I mean, vision, explain the vision quickly. What is the vision for Mall One? It was um, very simple. For one day all around the world, 24 hours, we celebrate with our Hmong women and girls all around the world. Um, at the time, we had, we, there's 15 million Hmong people worldwide, yeah. 7 million Hmong women and girls worldwide. So the vision was, could you imagine for one day, just one day, we had 7 million Hmong women and girls celebrating on the exact microsecond, just being a Hmong woman. That was the vision. That, okay. That's the vision for Hmong women take on the world, right? Mm -hmm. How did you crowdfund for that thirty thousand from the story, right? You so you wrote the story, right? So explain the story. So me, can you explain the story? <laughs> yeah, I mean it was like that vision. So it really just started, right? Like I just, I just, I just reached out to everyone and anyone that I knew. Like yeah. I knew everyone in my, I said, hey, I'm trying to start up Moment Team on the world. What do you think about this? Is it kind of a crazy vision? And they're like, yeah, it's crazy. And yeah. I was like. Okay, awesome. It's crazy. That's good. All right. So, you know, like, what are some ways that we could get things started? You know, can I look at sponsorships? Could I look at individual contribution? Like, what are some things that I could do? Right. And so it was a good mix of sponsorship and um, individual contributions. Right. But honestly, like I shared the vision with my friends and family and they were the ones that said yes first. They were the ones that was like, oh, Elizabeth. I don't know how you're going to pull it off, but I believe in you. So here's a hundred dollars. And then all of a sudden that first thousand dollar happened. And then when that first thousand dollar happened, this goes back into your marketing, right? Like you got to feed back to your marketing. You start talking about who's part of that vision, building it with you. And you got to build them. The reason why I'm asking is yeah. you weren't selling a product. You weren't giving anybody anything. You were exactly. just giving them your vision yeah. and tie that to a story, right? So what was the story? Your it was your your daughter, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh okay, so play that again because I'm gonna capture that. So <laughs> okay. tell, us, tell us a story about your daughter again. Yeah. So this is my pitch. I'll just tell you my pitch, yeah, right? I'll, pitch. I'll just lay it down, right? So so anytime I talk to somebody again, right? I'm not talking to you, Chai, asking for money, right? Like I, that's never my intention. That's never my intention in business. That's never my intention with mom and take on the world. Right. But I might say to you, I might be like, hey Chai. You know, thanks for meeting with me today. I just want to tell you about what I'm working on. And if it feels right to you, right? Like, I would love for you to help build this with me. And any advice that you have would be awesome, right? And then you would say, sure, okay, cool. And I said, hey, so I'm working on this thing, it's called Home and Take on the World. And it's a 24 hour global online summit, never been done before. And we are going to bring Hmong women and girls all around the world to celebrate at that exact moment, right? And we have the possibility of one day bringing together 7 million women and girls around the world. What would your impression be if I said that to you? I'm like, that's crazy. Right? So I go, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And that's why I need you, Chai. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, I, okay. All right. Right? <laughs> right. I said, Here's what I'm thinking. And then you'd be like, yeah, what? And I said, well, of course, this is like me, Chai, doing my homework on you, right? And just really understanding, like, what's important to you what matters to you are you a father are you a husband like are you like all these things right and i might say do you know anybody that you know like a monk sister that would be a great maybe a great speaker feature at the event that's an ask or if you're a business owner i might say hey you know would you be interested in being a sponsor and showing your support in something that's this crazy vision that's going to be happening right and i can tell you for my, I got a lot of notes from sponsors because they're like a lot of small business owners, especially loan business owners are like, why would I, why would I do that? I don't have a global business. My business is only here locally in Minnesota, Wisconsin, California, local, right? It was very hard to find a business owner that was more than two states. Only this year I found one creative results, um, Wisconsin and, and Minnesota, but very few home business owners were in multiple states nationally right yeah. so the first year that i try to get sponsors honestly it was really hard because they were like i'm just not national i'm not even like how can i do global i'm not even national right 
But I will say that the ones that came on board weren't just because they were looking to sponsor to advertise. They were really invested in the vision of what I was building. And that's oh, that, the that's great. I mean, it just 30,000. Holy cow. I mean, it's correct, right? It's 30,000, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to like, I mean, it's hard enough to ask for five bucks from somebody, let alone like a friend, you yeah. know, hey, can I borrow five bucks? Yeah. So to pull that off, you know, what, I mean, how long did that take? You said 24 hours, right? Well, it took us six months to launch it and, and to start from the yeah. app all the way to launching it, which was yeah. May 2018. So it was six months in the making. And then we finally had our, um, our summit in May. So, but to, to get that 30,000, huh? I mean, well, six months, maybe yeah. to push it all the way. That's, that's crazy. That is crazy guys. So kudos to you. Um, you didn't sell anything. You didn't give anybody anything. All you did was sold a vision. And that is, that's what hustling is all about. You know? Well, I sold them the summit, right? We made the summit free the first year. Yeah. So everyone and anyone could come. And, and so I want to just be clear. I wasn't just selling the vision and nothing happened. Okay. I, I mean, I sold the vision. So we brought money to help make the summit happen. Right. And right. then after the summit happened, I, 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 I sold what we delivered, right? So, I mean, like if you came on board and you bought into the vision, one of the things I did to all my sponsors after the summit happened was I circled back with you and I said, Chai, I just wanted you to know that because of your investment in me, we brought together 550 attendees across eight countries. And because of your investment in One Woman Take on the World, we had yeah. 40 storytellers across eight countries. I want you to know that you were a part of that. Right. Like I just don't I don't it's relationship building. I don't just say thanks for your your tech. Oh, you never hear from me again. Right. Yeah. I mean, we were promoting our sponsors throughout the whole event. And then after the summit, I closed the loop with each of my sponsors, too. And I said, hey, I wanted you to know whether or not you can attend the summit. Yeah. I wanted you to know this. This is what we delivered. These are the results. Five hundred yeah. attendees. Right. So so I want people to know that, yeah, you buy into the vision. But I deliver the results. I delivered what we both said we were committed to, which is you wow. know making a change, right, in the community and doing things differently. Like that's the key here, right? Doing things differently, right? Five hundred attendees, you said. Holy yeah. cow! So wow. All right. So I mean, enough of that. I mean, we can do a whole show on how you got that. I think that would be awesome. How many people want to hear how she did it? Did you did you do like a um, and a how to video. I mean, I know we talked about it a little bit. Yeah. The show. So I did it the first year, but this year, this year, yeah. I'm doing a VIP day after the summit. You can buy the VIP pass to come to the summit. And then November, me, my my leadership team, and some of our speakers, I'm doing a whole behind the scenes walk you through two hours of how I pull it together. Right. And I'm putting it all out there. I want my my core planning team to be there. Yeah. Any whatever people want to ask I want to make it open so why am I doing that why am I being so transparent because I believe that it's not just for my mom sisters it's also for my home brothers right that it might have started with me but I really want to share that knowledge share that experience because I want every single one of you to rise beyond where you're at right like it's this year's theme is all about rising beyond borders and technology and social media is the fastest way to do that to bring big and more people together we're stronger together right and um, so yeah, if people are interested in that, you know, grab a ticket, a VIP pass. Yeah. Um, it's like nine nine dollars, gets you into the summit plus the VIP day with me and my team. So and you're using the same uh, strategy with this summit, right? What was that? You're using the same strategy with this summit. This year we did. did a little bit. We this okay. year we didn't do crowdfunding. Um, okay. we decided that we had a very different agenda in the beginning of the year. Than okay, we well, let's let's go. I mean, I know we're we're already tapping into it. So let's talk about your your summit that's coming up. Yeah, and we can kind of flow back to this if we needed to. Yeah, sure. So, so uh, hold on, let me let me let me get a few. So <laughs> those of you guys who joined, let us know where you guys are at. I mean, uh, man, you guys, there's so many of you guys. Appreciate you guys joining. It's late. Uh, give some thumbs up, man. What you guys heard? I took so many so much notes. Uh, man, I'm gonna use some of this stuff. I mean, when, when she just told us about that 30,000, whatever it is she got for her last yeah, summit. You, that was you like a home hustler global summit, right? <laughs> that, we, we had a seminar. We had a seminar. Global summit, right? 
uh, I think you were breaking up there, but we had a seminar. Uh, we did a seminar here in Florida where we taught two courses. And yeah. um, we had like 150, 150 people on there when we charged 500 bucks for. So uh, we've, we we sold out. So for, um, what, for what you're doing uh, was amazing as well. So, um, and it's hard. I know how hard it is because I did 150 and it was hard. So for you to do this and make money and, you know, 30,000, that's amazing. So, um, but uh, for those of you guys just joined, give us a thumbs up. Love it. Uh, let us know where you guys are from so we know what our, you know, viewers are, are coming from as well. Um, Elizabeth, uh, she's she's the owner, I guess, owner, I guess, founder. You call it founder, right? Of yeah. Modern Women Take on the World. Uh, she's got a summit coming up um october 17 and 18. 17 yep. 18. so uh let's talk about it um want to hear about it can you yeah so one of the things that i'm doing really different this year um so the first one happened i, I always think of these summits as chapters right like i'm writing chapters in history with my, our home community the first year was really around believe um and after i launched it i took a step back to really listen what was happening in the home community um, I had, you know, really supportive home brothers reaching out, um, home sisters. And then this year, our theme is all about rising beyond borders. Mm -hmm. um, because what took place between 2018 and now is I started to have like Hmong women or Hmong people that would reach out and they would say, hey, Elizabeth, I'm thinking about starting a domestic violence program or, hey, Elizabeth, I want to start this group, but I'm out here in North Carolina and Chimua Hmong, right, or Chimua Support School. Like, what do you think I should do? And my whole thought was, why are you not connecting with the people, networking, right, with the people that have already done it, right? And so this year is all about really challenging us, our home community in Minnesota, California, Wisconsin, to think beyond our local communities and start looking at the home people outside of those big three states that need us. Um, that really need our support, need our experience, need our knowledge. And so the 20 for two-day event is going to be a global online celebration this year go you know like 10 or 12 key speakers that are going to be focused on teaching a whole bunch of different audiences linda yang is one of them on sales and we're really focused on Hmong women leadership what is no longer serving us that we got to step up in different ways right and so that's really what the summit's going to be about um, I'm really excited about it because we're also going to be doing a global networking. Um, we're going to be using a platform that's not on Facebook. It's going to be a lot cooler than that. And the intent is really around celebration networking. And I'm going to be creating a playbook. So all of our sessions, each speaker is going to share key strategies, key takeaways. And I'm going to be putting into a guide or playbook that, you know, if you don't have time to, to, to watch all those sessions, you can go ahead and um, you know get the summary and the guide and you know be able to take care of that, right? So that's really what's happening. And then of course I'm doing the VIP day too. So after the event, for anybody who wants to know like behind the scenes how I pull it together, um, my team and I, I'm gonna just keep it real and lay it out there, right? So that's, that's so okay. I see. So so Fang goes. I mean, which I'm curious too. Fang Fang Shua says, what topics or events are taking place during the summit, right? So what can you tell us any topics like what what topics would you guys be talking about? Yeah, so um, we have Judge Sophia Velo who's going to be talking about um, what it's like to work in a white America. So how do you talk about race work in the workplace without it being like there's a chip on your shoulder? Um, another topic, as I mentioned, Linda is going to be talking about sales, dismantling you know um, gender differences and insecurities around that. Um, I'm going to be talking about leadership and how to step outside fear. Um, I'm also going to be sharing um, some research that my team and I did on Hmong women organizations, what's trending, where we need to step up differently, um, and where we need to, like, I get a lot of how come we don't collaborate, how come we don't see more collaboration just in the Hmong community with brothers and sisters. And I think it's because no one's really shown examples of collab collaboration projects. So I'll be really focused on um, two projects. One of them we're gonna be asking funding for. So it's almost like a, an accelerator where I bring my women together, we come up with an idea, 
It's going to benefit Hmong Women Take on the World for funding. But most importantly, I'm bringing on these women to give them skills and apprenticeship, almost like an apprenticeship, teach them everything that I know so yeah. that beyond the summit, they can launch whatever they want to. So those are just some of the things that we're going to be talking about. Um, other topics, Luan C. Moi, you know, how to run for politics. Um, <laughs> you know, like how, yeah. how, you know, even if you don't want to run for politics, how can you show up in the government, right? Uh, Bao Bang. She's going to be talking about stand up, stand out, like visibility, getting seen. You wow. Know, okay. that, right. So, you know, if you, I think I sent you the the link and I can definitely share it here too, but yeah, share to share the landing page, if you want to get more specific and details, um, you'll be able to, if you get the general pass, you'll be able to catch 72 hour replays. If you get the VIP pass, you get up to two years of access to all the replays. So it's a lot. It's a well, lot. I'm going to get to that. So that's yeah. amazing. So you are already talking about, I mean, first thing that caught my eye was visibility, right? So the topics, you know, if you're not known, like my mentor says, it's all about visibility. If, if nobody knows you, you know, nobody's going to give you money. Nobody's going to care about you. So you're already talking about like one of the most important topics out there which is visibility collaboration right it's all about networking right so if you're not networking it's like you can't you can't build an empire without people right mm -hmm. so you guys are already talking about collaboration sales that's amazing too you need to yeah. sell you need to learn how to sell that's that's a good topic as well and then and then leadership I mean i mean i know we won't touch on the other topics but give us one thing about leadership that you might be like talking about. Yeah, so I'm very passionate about leadership, especially in the Hmong community, because there's a lot of taboo associated with it. In the Hmong community, we still think of leadership being very formal. Um, you have to have a fancy title, you have to have years of credibility, or you like somehow have to be part of like a clan with status and like 10 PhDs, right? So I'm gonna be talking about the white elephant in the room and the way that I define leadership, even for my team is, leadership is simply how people experience you period. And I know this to be true, even in the Hmong community, because if you think about y'all, talk to all your leaders in our community, the ones that you actually truly have respect for, they make you feel something, don't they? Like, they make you feel inspired. They make you feel like, God, I just had this conversation with him. And he makes me feel like I could do anything, right? And so leadership is really good. Leaders make you feel really good about yourself. Like, there's a sense of possibility that they plant in you, right? Even big Hmong leaders, the ones that we don't respect, even though no one will kindly say it to them directly, are the ones that don't make you feel anything. They are top down, very hard, you know, hierarchical, right? So even though they have a fancy title or status, oftentimes respect is still earned, right? The respect is still earned. So I'm gonna be talking about how leadership is really about how people experience you. Um, and a big part of that, like you said, Cha, is like how you show up, visibility. Like I always say, you gotta get heard, you gotta get seen, so you can get paid. You don't, you know, like paid in terms of being an entrepreneur, but also career advancement, right? You don't get promotions if you're quiet, not yeah. seen, not heard. Exactly. Right? So that's key. Wow, that's amazing. So yeah, oh man. So that's good stuff. I mean, I mean, that little snippet of you talking about leadership, um, I think I think I know what the answer was that you say you're talking about leadership, <laughs> but we'll keep that as a secret when you teach it. You know that that's the, you know yeah. that's the that's what that's what you have to pay to get in and to learn. You know these tips, you know and stuff like that. How much is it? Yeah, the so general pass is twenty nine dollars. You get seventy two hour replay. Um, you know I say the value of being there live is for the global networking, but if you can't make it. That's cool, you know, yeah. you can replay. Um, our VIP pass is $99, and then I'm doing a gift set, which is um, $199, so you get all the above, including the playbook, and also, like, my Home Women Take on the world, world fan merchandise. So a big part of what I started in 2018 was also selling merchandise, right? So um, if there's anything I know about online experiences, it's also that there's value in something tangible. So my team at the time, we, we also launched, um, some really amazing swag. And so, um, 
part of the Rise gift set will be a swag. So you get your t-shirts and get some of our favorite things included in that. So nice. So 99 bucks, man. That's that's nothing, guys. I mean, no, it's not. You know, to, I mean to network yeah. with all these. How many did you say? How many guests was there? Uh, how many uh speakers are there? Um, off the top, I think we were at oh gosh, I should know this number, but you know, I've been working so much. I yeah. think we're at 10 or 12. So um this no, year I meant, I meant uh, how many speakers like are presenting? Yeah, 10 or 12 off the oh, top. 10 or 12. Okay, 10 or 12. So to network with like these 10 or 12 leaders, I guess I'm sure they done some stuff to, and they done this kind of stuff too. So um, to network, I mean, ultimately to me, to me, ultimately it's not about the knowledge because you can get knowledge from like YouTube, you know, or reading a book, but to get the knowledge from like, go just, just to sign up is more of a networking event, right? To get to know the people. Because it's all about networking. I mean, you, like I said, you can't build an empire by yourself. But but if you know somebody who knows somebody can build it for you, or 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 they can become your friends and build it with you, that's that's the amazing part. And that's only ninety nine bucks, guys. Ninety nine bucks. That's nothing. Well, I want my phone brothers to too, right? Like I often say, you know, like um, I'll tell you a funny story. So my son at the time when I launched Moment to go in the world and I was talking to my daughter and he's like, mom, he was nine. He's like, what about me? What about me? What about me? Right. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, he's like, can I do a mom boy take on the world? Right. And I said, of course. Absolutely. Baby. Yeah. Right. But I said to him, you know, I'm still waiting for my mom brother to be like, Hey, I want to do something like this for big girl brothers or big hall community. Right. At a global scale. Right. Because like I said to my son, you know, as either one alone, the story that I know the most, the best, is mine. It's among women, right? I'm not going to go out there and try to speak about a Hmong brother's story. It's just not my story to tell, right? Yeah. So, but even with that, it doesn't mean that you can't come and learn. You know, I, I want to see my Hmong brothers, you know, be successful leaders. And the truth is, what makes you a successful leader is your ability to manage a very diverse team with empathy, right? Connection. And so by coming, you'll get exposed and you'll get, you know, a sneak peek at what some of the big and Hmong are facing, right? And I think that just makes you a better leader, you know? Um, especially if you're managing a team where there's young women there, right? And so that's really the key. And, you know, I don't hold it. I'm very blunt and direct, and I don't really hold anything back. So even the VIP day, you know, I'm going to share what I can in two hours, right? So um, that's really my goal is to pass along this knowledge because I can tell you my rate for my business is way more expensive than the $100, right? <laughs> but I do this because this is my way to give back to the community in what, like, lights me up. Right. So that's my contribution. Yeah. And, and guys, we're getting close to the end of the show. So comment uh, any questions you got. Uh, so uh, I can, she can answer that, you know, live for you. And we'll give you, we'll yeah. give you guys a shout out. Or if you just want to give us a shout out, say, Hey, you know, I'm from California or from Wisconsin, or, you know, if you love it, if you love the show, what she's, what she's given so far, I've taken so much notes right now that, yeah. you know, it's amazing right now. So I'm already getting, so much great information right here. Um, give some likes, love it. Um, but you know, I know what you're doing. Um, I mean, I've done this, I, I've done a seminar. Yeah. This, we don't make money doing this. This is <laughs> this is just giving back, right? What you're charging here is just, it's just time, you know? Yeah. And I, and like I said, I've done my seminar. And, you know, we raised, I mean, not raised, but we made about 30,000 out of my seminar. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, it wasn't enough. I mean, for me to spread that out to my to my uh, my other speakers and stuff like that for, you know, renting the room and stuff like that, <clears throat> I didn't make any money out of it. So for you to do this, I know you're not making any money out of it, but you're just giving back. So this is amazing stuff that you're doing here. So, yeah, Michael. Um, break even right like my goal is just to break even um that's really my goal here <laughs> so yeah um, like why well, i don't i don't even, you know i just like i even just talked to like my home community right it's like you know you don't have to show up for me for moment take on the world but if we don't show up to like support each other when they're they are trying to launch these type of initiatives and um they're like oh it's not free i don't want to go then you know what happens is 
you know, like people get tired too. People get burnt out, right? And so we got to show up to support each other. It's not just about, you know, being but it's about supporting like novel ideas that you can get excited about that's different so they can move forward. That's the key. Yeah, I wouldn't even say supporting. I mean, you're you're there in network, right? You're there, you did, I mean, you're there for knowledge, but you're there most important is to network and learn from somebody who's actually got this knowledge. So yeah. if you need some sort of, if you had questions, you can ask them right away instead of watching like a video on YouTube and just absorb it. But when you have questions, you can't, you can't ask questions on how they took care of it. Right. So for 99 bucks, I mean, the 29 bucks, man, eh, you know, I would just go straight for the 99 bucks right there. You know, that's, that's where it's at, you know, the VIP where you get to learn like what Elizabeth's done, you know, the, what do you call it? The backstory, the backstage. Yeah. yeah. Behind the scenes. Yep. Behind the scenes for her to learn, like her to show you what she did to create all this. That's, that's what you want to know because that's where the money's made. But like I say, we're not making any money. I mean, maybe you're making just enough to break even, but ultimately, you know, it's, uh, you know, you're just giving back to the, the community, which is awesome. I mean, yeah. I know I'm not making any money with my hustlers. <laughs> get back, right? Like we all got to show up and do our part, right? I mean, like putting on these summits, I I do it for my my business, you know, my clients. On um, you know, outside of that, that's where I'm looking to make money, right? That's where I'm looking to to make money so that it can help me fund things like this that allows me to could do this inside the home community and just with the goal of breaking even, right? And so, um you know that's that's what it what it is but yeah i mean you know what it is is about like you said it's not just about hey i'm here to support you here's a check it's about networking it's about finding like-minded people that can come together and just be like how do we lean on each other right like i learned so much from you chai and you know and i'm enjoying this conversation just talking about business because i don't get to do this all the time right especially with yeah. the community so it's a thrill for me to talk about business especially you know inside of the monk community you know yeah it's, it's hard like there's not that much like monk groups out there that would you know we can just sit around and talk to each other about business right yeah so the only way to do this is like it's by some sort of like this like a summit where you, know, you got like-minded people you know where they're not coming in for free so you got those people that you already filter out that you know are looking to to make some money or are entrepreneur minded that actually want something out of it to discuss you know stuff that they gone through so this is great stuff uh guys sign up 99 bucks uh i'll just go straight for the 99 bucks the 29 bucks that's like you know that's just to get in you know but uh once you do the back the, the backstage stuff that's gonna you know you learn you learn more with that um man anything else anybody got any questions maybe you got a lot of people on here going wow <laughs> so all right so um we'll, we'll we'll go to our last segment of the show if any questions we'll, we'll go and hit you up on it or or how did they get a hold of you how do we get this at this how do we sign up first of all yeah so um if you go to our facebook page which is mo women take on the world um you can go there mo women take on the world.com and find the link to sign up you can do that there too right and i'll put in, I'll put in the uh the the the, the, the i guess the the video notes as yeah well. Yeah, and you know, and or you just got a question, you're just curious, like reach out, right? Like I'm doing this, you guys, because I'm hoping that I can inspire many more of us wanting to bring, you know, people together all over the nation, all over the globe, right? Um, we got it. We got to do that. You know, funny story, you know, related to Mel Huston, right? I was um, in 2018. I was out in Australia, right? And Gucci like your law in Australia, and I'm learning about how they're running their businesses. Um, like a bone store and things like that. Now, of course, in Australia, it's monkey gong, right? So it's not like they can just open up a monk store and just cater only to Hmong, right? They have to cater to like the Asian market in Australia. Yeah. And um, it was so interesting because and it made me realize how look your law. I'm gonna keep it real. Look your law are so much better at net networking than big law, right? Yeah. It's so much better because the about how he runs his business, and he was like. 
you know, maybe once or twice a year, they go into, they come to Minnesota, they come to California, Wisconsin, the big three states, right? And they go and they meet with the owners of, you know, Tala Chapo, or they go into these like Hmong shops and villages and markets and just observe what people are doing. Loco, right? They're observing to see what the demand is. And then they go back to Australia and they replicate it for their Asian market, right? And so they're learning from what's working, what isn't, as they're talking and networking with these owners, right? And I just thought, what if I realized I said to this uncle, I said, this grandfather, I said, oh, okay, network, like we don't even have that GE to like study and do that. And he does that like internationally, right? So I share that to say there's a huge opportunity for Bikyahua to learn and network um, beyond just exchanging business cards, right? Like we can really yeah. help each other. That's, that's that. because the school system is taught of not to talk to strangers. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, yeah, we got to get away from that, you know, you know, get away from uh, that, not talk to strangers, you know, so we're, that's probably why. So, you know, but you know, that's my, that's my take on it. So I'm teaching my kids to talk to strangers. So, <laughs> so awesome. So, uh, last question, you know, which we do with all of our guests, you know, yeah. Yeah. If you had a billion dollars, what would what was the first two things you do with it? Oh my gosh, a billion dollars. Billion mm. dollars. So the first thing I would do with it, right, is I would actually create like a Hmong Influence Institute and I would really try to create it and make it global. And it would be a way to not only capture history across the world of what's been happening with Bikya leaders. But I really wanted to really be a true leadership institute where we are bringing the best of the best and we're putting through any Hmong brother or sister who wants to apply to be an apprenticeship, like part of the apprenticeship. Because I think that, you know, one, our school systems are failing us in general. And two, even a lot of the big Hmong organizations, they're just so local. Right. And so if you can bring in like people from across different diverse sectors, from you know, business to private to po politics, to really like train and, and take these students or through an apprenticeship program to launch their own initiatives, whether it's nonprofit or for business, that would be my dream. I would just be funding that. And then I would just bring people from all over like Asia to do that. That would be my first thing. And the second thing, I would totally splurge. I would just go around the world and go on vacation, right? Like travel, see the world with my family after COVID. Um, and, and just really, you know, be able just to enjoy the life that way, you know, that's what I would do. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. Yeah. Awesome. So appreciate you coming on the show on the show, Elizabeth. Um, guys, sign up 99 bucks. It's that's nothing. That's like you go out drinking at a club or something. Right? Go <laughs> sign up. Something. Network. I mean, we got a bunch of girls on there, you know, teaching what they know. Most important thing is visibility, you know, sales, leadership, collaboration, networking, guys. Yep. Get together, sign up. Um, I hope it goes uh, successful for you. I'm looking for, you know, to see how it goes. Heck, I might even be there. There we go. I might even be there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I don't know. I mean, there'll be a bunch of girls on there, but. Uh, hey, we have a pop up celebration book and we got brothers all up in there too. So it's all good. <laughs> It's all good. Yeah. All right. All yeah. All right. Cool. So, hey, thanks for coming to the show. Uh, guys, give us some likes. You know, she's doing awesome stuff, uh, helping us, uh, Hmong community out. And uh, uh, good luck to you, Elizabeth. Yeah, Chai, thanks so much for having me on. And thanks yeah. for like, having me on to support and talk business and talk Hmong and take on the world. I I couldn't be happier just to show up to support you and learn more about how Hmong Hustler is doing this. And um, just thank you to Linda. Shout out, talk about networking. Shout out to Linda for making the introduction between the both of us too. So thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. So uh, until, until then, guys, uh, keep hustling day and night. See you guys. Take care. Mm -hmm.